Space-based semiconductor manufacturing could become in the near future a crucial industry. It is a key area between two emerging markets. With the development of SpaceX Starship, the cost of sending payloads to orbit will drop immensely. And due to its large fairing, the size of the payloads can be significantly bigger. This opens the opportunity to launching entire factories into space at a low cost. At the same time, the AI revolution is driving an increasing demand for faster processing power and therefore more advanced semiconductors. Given these factors, space-based semiconductor manufacturing presents a massive opportunity. At the time, silicon is the base material of nearly all electronic chips. This is because silicon is a semiconductor that has a high concentration in the Earth's crust and is therefore really inexpensive. Also, silicon has good properties, for example, high electron mobility. The silicon infrastructure on Earth is hundreds of billions of dollars worth. Experiments show that space-grown semiconductor crystals are orders of magnitude better than Earth-grown crystals. However, the cost for moving an already established $100 billion worth market into space cannot be justified. Therefore, it does not make sense to relocate the silicon-based semiconductor industry into space. Instead, a logical approach would be to move the next semiconductor material generation directly into space and profit there from better ground crystals. This would lead to processors that outperform silicon processors by orders of magnitude, making them the preferred choice for electronics and AI hardware manufacturers. More advanced types of materials than silicon, which will be used in the next generation of semiconductors are graphene, gallium nitride, silicon carbide and diamond. These semiconductor chips will have enhanced performance, efficiency, higher operating frequencies and better thermal performance. The Inter-University Microelectronics Center in Leuven, Belgium also made the prediction that these new semiconductor materials will replace silicon sooner rather than later. Besides the new materials used, also new fabrication techniques are emerging. Conventional technologies for chip fabrication are for example atomic layer deposition, etching and photolithography. The fabrication techniques which are currently under development are printed devices, gravier and inkjet manufacturing. Therefore space semiconductor factories could not only use new materials but also new manufacturing approaches. The United States are at the time behind China and Taiwan in semiconductor manufacturing. Now is the perfect time to change this with the next semiconductor generation. The United States should start over and use the newest materials, manufacturing methods and take advantage of space manufacturing with Starship's future capability. Now let us get to the reasons why space manufacturing has advantages over manufacturing of semiconductors on Earth. First of all, it is necessary to have longer times of microgravity to produce semiconductors. Therefore, the microgravity which can be created on Earth with the help of parabolic flights and drop tower experiments are too short. Microgravity has some effects on the behavior of liquids and gases which are advantageous for the production of semiconductors. One advantage is the absence of buoyancy and sedimentation. On Earth, the density of a fluid or material determines whether it will float or sink. This is the reason why oil and water will separate when filled in a cup together. But in microgravity, the relative density does not matter. Semiconductor crystals grow because of this with much more uniformity and are dispersed more evenly. Another important factor is the absence of convection. This phenomenon is closely related to sedimentation. When heating, for example, a pot of water, the water closer to the heat source gains more energy than the water on top. The water at the bottom becomes less dense and rises to the top. In turn, the cool liquid is sinking to the bottom. This cycle of warm liquid rising and cool liquid sinking can be called convection. Without convection in space, molten materials for semiconductor crystal growth do not experience constant mixing from hot to warm areas. This leads to a more uniform temperature which reduces defects and improves crystal quality. Besides this, in space there is also absence of hydrostatic pressure. This is a phenomenon where in a container the pressure of the fluid at the bottom is higher because of the weight of the fluid at the top. The uniform pressure in space reduces stress on crystal structures which enables semiconductor layers to form more easily and with fewer defects. Finally, there is also the absence of container requirements. In space liquids float freely without the need for a container. Therefore, there is no real size limitation for crystal growth in space. Additionally, because the material does not come into contact with container walls, contamination is completely avoided. As a result, larger and purer crystals can be grown.
Beyond physical improvements, space-based semiconductor manufacturing also offers advantages in terms of complexity, energy efficiency and pollution. In low Earth orbit, there is vacuum in a range of 10 to the power of minus 5 to 10 to the power of minus 8 Pascal. For semiconductor manufacturing, exactly these vacuum levels are needed. Also, for some steps in the production, cooling is required. For this, in space, the parts could be just moved to the shadow side, where temperatures as low as minus 273 degrees Celsius are accessible. Solar energy is another advantage. Due to the direct and uninterrupted exposure to the sun in orbit, solar power becomes far more efficient and can be used to greater effect. Besides this, on Earth pollution from semiconductor factories is really high. In orbit, these concerns are eliminated. Finally, on Earth crystal growth facilities have to employ strong magnetic fields and rotating assemblies to combat convection issues on Earth. Because these systems are not needed in space, the factories would become very simpler. Semiconductor manufacturing consists out of two main steps. At first, the base material has to be created. Here crystals have to be grown. This is called substrate production. The second step is device fabrication, where the base crystals undergo multiple manufacturing steps to become functional semiconductors. For the first step, substrate production, studies have shown that semiconductor crystals processed in low Earth orbit compared to Earth samples are more than 80% improved in structure, uniformity, reduction in defects and optical properties. The second step, device fabrication, is due to a lack of experiments not as well understood. Not that much data is available about the advantages and disadvantages. However, some things are known. In device fabrication, special inks are used, containing active materials that enable the development of electrical properties within semiconductors. In space, there is a higher stability of the active material and therefore a higher concentration can be loaded onto the inks. This leads to superior mechanical performance and improved long-term device stability. Additionally, because fewer additives are required in the ink, the post-processing stage is significantly simplified. As a concept for the factory building approach, the following would be feasible. Starship could launch with its big fairing and low payload cost per kilogram huge modular factories to space. There would be regular supply missions where Starship would transport the necessary base materials to these factories. At the same time, Starship could take the manufactured chips and bring them back to Earth. This would ensure a smooth transport system, guaranteeing both material delivery and product return. In the following, you can see a table with the most important properties for the next-gen materials for semiconductors. As you can see, diamond has the highest band gap, the highest thermal conductivity, highest critical breakdown voltage and highest electron saturation velocity. The only major drawback is its relatively low electron mobility. The band gap is one of the most important characteristics. The band gap is the difference between the valence band, which is the highest energy range where electrons are still bound to the atoms, and the conduction band, which is the lowest energy range where the electrons are not anymore bound to the atom and can freely move. So in principle, the next energy jump after the valence band. A large band gap means therefore that more energy is needed for the electrons to jump from bounded to the atom to be free to move. This has the following advantages. Diamond semiconductors are not sensitive to thermal excitation and can therefore operate at much higher temperatures. There are also no leakage currents and a stronger electric field can be established before breakdown occurs. Another key benefit of diamond semiconductors is their resistance to radiation damage, making them particularly well suited for space-based manufacturing. However, a higher band gap also comes with certain disadvantages. One major drawback is that higher voltages are generally required for operation. Another challenge is the fabrication process itself. Diamond semiconductors are extremely difficult to manufacture. Therefore, space manufacturing offers a significant advantage here. Diamond offers superior properties overall, but it's particularly well suited for high power, high temperature electronics. It is also ideal for quantum computing and quantum sensing applications, both of which are fields expected to see significant advancements in the near future. Additionally, diamond semiconductors can be utilized in radio frequency technology, laser systems and photonics devices. However, due to diamond's low electron mobility, the semiconductors are not optimal for high-speed electronics, as their switching speeds are relatively low. One of the biggest challenges in using diamond for semiconductors is growing 
offering large, high-quality crystals. The France-based company Diamfab produced crystals as large as 100 mm, but struggled in reducing the density of defects. Improving crystal growth and minimizing defects are precisely the areas where space-based manufacturing could make diamond semiconductors a leading contender for the next generation of ships. For completeness, here's an overview for the applications of the other next-gen semiconductor materials. Silicon carbide is mostly used where the temperature is high, so for example in power inverters, motors and fast chargers. Gallium nitride is used in radio frequency devices and high speed applications in data centers. And lastly graphene, it has no intrinsic band gap and therefore cannot provide any switching functionality for digital electronics. The only application cases for graphene are sensing devices. The Advanced Research Project Agency, also called DARPA, the United States Department of Defense, released 2018 a 1.5 billion contract to accelerate the development of these new materials. This investment underscores the growing recognition that these advanced semiconductors are on track to replace silicon as the dominant material in the industry. Several experiments have already been conducted in space to explore semiconductor manufacturing. The first commercial venture for semiconductor production was proposed as early as 1979, but due to technological limitations and insufficient funding, it was not realized. On the International Space Station, 13 semiconductor manufacturing experiments have been carried out. Peer-reviewed publications are accessible for these experiments. The ISS is equipped with the Subsa furnace, capable of reaching 850 degrees Celsius for up to an hour. Additionally, the Material Science Laboratory houses another furnace that can reach temperatures as high as 1400 degrees Celsius. These extreme temperatures are crucial for producing semiconductor crystals. Besides the semiconductor experiments, related experiments have been conducted in fields like pharmaceutics, where crystal growth has also been observed. In microgravity, these crystals tend to form smaller and more uniform structures, which is a promising sign also for semiconductor applications. However, semiconductor experiments on the ISS are subject to strict safety regulations due to high temperatures, material toxicity and significant power needs. Because of these risks, semiconductor manufacturing is not well suited for crude space stations. External platforms, uncrewed satellites, vehicles or factories would be necessary for the efficient production, but would also require a high level of automation. Also, already some companies are working on the topic. In July 2023, the California-based startup Vada Space Industry successfully grew crystals of the drug Ritonavir autonomously in space. However, due to issues with the Federal Aviation Administration, the company was unable to bring the payload back to Earth. Another company, made in space, developed a machine for glass alloy manufacturing that leverages the absence of sedimentation and convection in space. This machine produces higher quality glass products for applications such as optical fibers, lenses and laser technology. Made in Space also developed a 3D printer for the ISS, allowing astronauts to manufacture tools on demand. While they are not directly working on semiconductors, the experience in space-based manufacturing makes them a key player to watch out for in this field. Space-based semiconductor manufacturing is still a very young industry, but it has a lot of potential. As the demand for more advanced chips continues to rise and Starship's development progresses, this emerging sector presents significant opportunities for growth and innovation.